So how to work the stove. Um, right now it's fueled. There's no no pressure in the stove. See, I take the cap off. No pressure in there. This is how you would go about starting the stove up. The um, pump has this neat little lock, so you unlock the pump. That's five. I'm going to go maybe ten, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About all you really need to get started. Because these run really hot because of the fuel and because of the way they're built, because of the design of the home strand, they will tend to self-pressurize. Here's what you do next. You open the valve a little bit and you'll get alcohol coming out of it and you just need a little bit in the pan. I actually am busy talking and probably did a little more than I needed there. Light it. Do the same thing on the other side if you want both burners working. Just a little bit in the pan. And there's that one lit. Now, what we're doing is we're preheating the burners. Burners need to be preheated. Um, they need to be hot to vaporize the fuel. Because alcohol vaporizes at a very low temperature, it doesn't need to be real hot, but it does need to be hot. Now, you're hearing the gurgling sound from the tank. That's because some of the fuel is actually vapor vaporizing down and back into the tank. Um, not unusual, that's what I said. You'll, you'll get some self-pressurizing going on because of the way these stoves work. There is a wad of wire mesh in the base of each of these burners that's there to try to control some of that um, vaporization going back into the tank, but with the alcohol it only does so much. Now this one has completely died down when the fuel has, com or the preheat fuel has completely died down, the flame's gone. You can crack open the valve a little bit and light the burner. Right now we're on a simmer. This one I got way too much in so we're going to wait a, a little while here. And you can start to hear the standard pulse you'll get with this stove. All right, that's out. Light this burner. Okay, now they're both running. And you can see that the flame is pulsing. You can hear the sound of it pulsing. This is a design issue with this stove using these original kerosene style burners. Um, what's going on there is the fuel is surging back and forth in that straight tube that goes between the two burners from the tank and it surges back and forth and some of that vaporized alcohol will, will kick back into the tank. You'll find that the top of the stove will get hot your fuel cap will get hot, maybe even your pump will get hot because of that hot vapor going, surging back into the tank. Um, it's not explosive. You have a vent here. It'll vent. This is a safety cap. It'll vent if it gets too high. Um, we're operating here at, at low flows, at a simmer level. We can crank these open. Here's what you need to know on that. Cranking it open releases more fuel vapor and increases the flame. Eventually we get to a point where the cleaning needle will come up into the burner. It's good to, if you're going to clean your burner, keep a, a flame source handy so you can relight it. I'm going to do that now. Okay, the, you see the flame has gone out. I've cranked it completely to the left. The needle is now sticking out of the jet. As I crank it back to the right, We'll get fuel coming back on, and there's there's our stove running again. If you do it quickly, well, <laughs> sometimes you can do it quickly and it'll stay lit. Same thing here, we'll do a clean on it, opening it up all the way, up, oh, gone out, relight it. So here's your burners, they're operating at kind of a, a medium-high level. They're doing the typical surgy surgy that these do. Um, like I say, the tank will maybe pressurize more, but but let's look at that and um, I'm going to put a little more pressure in the tank so that we can 
see how it's probably going to end up here in a few more minutes when it pressurizes up. Okay, so this is about the most you're going to want to see coming out of your caps. You can see the flame is starting to lift off just a little bit on this cap. So at this point, just just don't don't overdo it. Just crank them down a little bit. You don't really get much advantage. You just crank them down. And there you are. And that's about what you're going to get out of this. You can get a nice simmer when you go all the way down like this. And also the simmer kind of tends to reduce that surging. I'm hoping you can see these flames. I actually have all the lights off here in my shop but there's enough ambient light through the, the windows that even with the shades drawn you can probably hardly see it. A little problem with using the alcohol in the stove of course is that the flame is almost invisible during the daytime. So do watch for that for a safety aspect. So that's it. That's how to run the stove. When you get ready to turn it off, just crank them all the way to the right and the burners go out. So I just want to say too, for fuel, you want to use denatured alcohol. Do not use isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol, or any other kind of alcohol. You need to be using denatured alcohol. Um, it's essentially the same kind of alcohol you drink. But, uh, to keep you from drinking it, they put poison in it. And this is the Clean Strip brand of alcohol. And you can get this uh, well, I get it at Home Depot, uh, is where I find it. There's another brand called Sunnyside, and I am out of that, so I can't show you the, the label for that, but I do have some of their turpentine, and that's what the Sunnyside label looks like, except it would say alcohol instead of pure gum spirits of turpentine. And the reason I mention this is this. With the poisons they put in here... <laughs> aren't really nasty chemicals. So when you're using that in your boat stove, you're going to have that issue, is you're going to be burning some nasty chemicals, and you'll probably smell kind of a, a nasty odor from time to time. Um, but there's stuff like methyl ethyl ketone, and, you know, they're not even telling me what's in this. That's pretty interesting. If you go on the Internet, you can find out. But the, what I'm trying to get to is that the Clean Strip brand has more nasties in it than the, the Sunnyside brand. The Sunnyside brand um, tends to be more just alcohol. Um, I guess it's ethyl alcohol. And then they also throw some methyl al alcohol, which is poisonous in there, and not so many baddies. You know, this one tends to have more baddies, but it's easier to find. And when you go to buy this, I have personally found that when I've gone to buy any of these alcohols, um, if you <laughs> try to buy more than a can or two cans, uh, they start asking you, like, are you, you know, making meth or something. Apparently they use this for methamphetamine production. So you may end up getting carded or having to sign forms to buy it, whatever. If you go to a marine supply place, they may have better quality alcohol, but it will be more expensive. I pay about 12 or $14 for this one gallon, and that's what you're going to need to have for your stove. All right.